flat. Fox College football is sponsored by AT&T Business. Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, affectionately known as the Palace on the Prairie. And we get to see one of the top teams in America as the Oklahoma Sooners face conference opponent, West Virginia, Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma won the toss to Fur. Beautiful day here in Norman, 63 degrees at kickoff time. This one kicked into the end zone for a touchback. In 2019, first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. And West Virginia picks up a first down on the first carry of the game. Terrific job for this West Virginia offensive line to come out firing on first down Sam James and they are missing so many players from a year ago when they had such a great offense but this group right here led by Austin Kendall they're gonna have to use some of those types of plays like we just saw misdirection watch for some trick plays the shovel pass all sorts of different things to try to get OU off their mark and here's James going around the right side with running room breaks free James will get into Oklahoma territory Sam James a gain of 11 now a gain of 16 Deshaun white with the tackle And there again just that little quick Shovel pass and they're in this muddle huddle right now And then they're trying to run up to the line of scrimmage and line up quickly and not allow Oklahoma to get set One of the things that Alex Grinch has done the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma is he has lined his defense up quickly all season long West Virginia right now is trying to combat that and he'll hand it off once again to James. James trying to get outside, bottled up and taken down, tackled for a loss. Great pursuit, Pat Fields finally comes over and cleans it up, and that's a loss of five yards. All right, pursuit, that's what you want to see. You want to see all the Oklahoma jerseys and helmets running that direction, and now you see him. You got four Oklahoma Sooners right there. Kenneth Murray is right there. And again, there's Fields, Pat Fields from that safety position, as Coach Meyer was talking about earlier on the pregame. Those safeties filling hard, great eye discipline in pursuit of the football. Letty Brown now in the backfield. He'll run it left. Brown falling forward. He'll get close to the 50-yard line for a gain of two. Kenneth Murray with the tackle what's the difference between this oklahoma defense this year under alex grinch well they they have simplified things so they can line up there's not as much confusion going on that simplification is all there also allowed them to play faster and with maximum effort and then they're tackling much better in space but i think it goes back to really the mentality gus they have a new culture and that is a culture of no excuses whatsoever i was brought by alex grinch and they're certainly imploring it on third down and 13, here's Brown. Letty Brown stopped by Deshaun White. Alex Grinch comes over to Oklahoma from Ohio State, where he served as the co-defensive coordinator last year for the Buckeyes under Urban Meyer. But his specialty is DBs. He was a safety in college. He didn't really have control last year. Yeah, and, and listen, that's something you go to be a part of a great staff and, and coach under a an elite head coach like Urban Meyer, and he did that for the experience, gave up the, the play calling duties, if you will, that he had at Washington State to have the experience, and he gained that experience and trying to use that this year here at Oklahoma. Josh Groudon will kick it away. C.D. Lamb is the deep man. And C.D. Lamb with the fair catch at the six yard line, a 40 yard runner, and it allows him to be more explosive as a passing team. Hurts 32 and two as a starter. First down and 10 at the seven yard line. They'll run it straight ahead with Kennedy Brooks. And Kennedy Brooks crosses the 20. Gets close to the 25. Fortune with the tackle after a 16 yard gain. They pull the guard around. They also have that tight end H back. Jeremiah Hall leading up in the hole. And Kennedy Brooks looks like he has become more of a featured back for them in the last couple of weeks. Gus, great game last week against Texas and Red River. And now here opening up as the starter this week. Ran for 105 yards against Texas last week. And they'll stay on the ground. Brooks can't get through the hole this time. It closes quickly. Ruben Jones. Plugged up the hole and made the tackle. Now, yeah, Ruben Jones there was the backside end, and he closed all the way down. Good pursuit down the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle. Makes it second down and 10. This defense, young, starting a lot of different people in a lot of different spots right now, and they've got three true freshmen in the secondary for Jalen Hurts to attack. 
Hurts to throw for the first time. Under pressure. And Jalen Hurts will be sacked. Great job. Reese Donahue got him from the backside. And West Virginia looking good on the defensive side to start. As Hertz is going to make this read, there's going to be a safety front side right here. The safety, he's sitting back there, and he's got nowhere to throw the football, and that pursuit comes in, and he goes to the ground. That's a nice job by Reese Donahue, making sure to get Jalen Hurts on the ground, who, by the way, outside of the pocket is one of the most dangerous runners as a quarterback that we have in America. Over 600 yards rushing for Jalen Hurts this season from the quarterback position, third down and 15. Hurts to throw, now he boxes out of the pocket, squares his shoulders, trying to pick up the first down and will not. Great coverage in the secondary by the Mountaineers, and it looks like the Sooners will be forced to punt. They were dropping everybody in coverage there. They only rushed three players up front. There was nowhere to go with the ball, and then they rallied up and forced Hurts out of the field of play as a terrific series for West Virginia with all their young players to get out of there on the first series and force a punt what a huge win for the Mountaineers Reeves Munchau will punt it away as he stands at the 15 yard line Alex Sinkfield is the deep man for West Virginia lets it take a bounce takes an Oklahoma bounce and out of bounds close to the 20 Welcome back. No score. West Virginia back on the field. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Taft. Well, guys, thank you. You know, the big question coming into this one, would, how would it feel for Austin Kendall to come back, face his former teammates? I caught up with him this morning, and he shared this story, that he received a text message from Creed Humphrey last night telling him to expect a surprise in his visitor locker. Now, what was that surprise? An Austin Kendall bobblehead. He said it would be weird to come back, but it has been such a warm welcome overall. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. Let's see if Austin Kendall can get this West Virginia offense going. First and 10 at the 22. He pulls it out, drops it down. And the Mountaineers, Mike O'Laughlin, will gain uh, about two yards on the play. Tackled by Kenneth Murray. Our academic ambition sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right. Our feature is Austin Kinder. Earned a communications degree here from OU. Now he's seeking his double master's candidate in sports management and athletic coaching there at West Virginia. So Kendall on the sideline right now. And West Virginia running the football. This time it's Trey Lowe, the redshirt freshman, comes in, and he's stopped by Nick Benito. And this is a guy that they think highly of, good athleticism from Tennessee. They wanted to get him in the game, get him in the game early, and Neil Brown got him some time late last week in a lopsided loss against Iowa State and wanted to get him in here on the road against Oklahoma, and they're able to do so. Third down and nine at the 23. Here's Kendall to throw it with time over the middle, a little high and incomplete. Intended for Bryce Wheaton, but that one thrown too high, so West Virginia three and out. And good time given to Kendall by that offensive line, but the coverage was just tremendous. He was trying to get this ball, and it looked like it slipped out of his hands. See how that ball is fluttering way high? He's actually lucky that didn't get intercepted when the ball flutters like that high and... and over the middle of the field. Remember, he was dealing with an injury. He was knocked out of last week's game with a chest injury. You gotta wonder if that's hindering him right now. Routon putting inside his own 10. C.D. Lamb at the 30. Signals for the fair catch and has it at the 34. 43-yard punt. And that's where Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma offense will start. OU, WVU, back after this. Today is the 127th straight sellout here at Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, a building that opened in 1923. Their record crowd, 88,038 against TCU in 2017. Great day for football. First down and 10 at the 34. The Sooners. And they'll run it. This is Hurts with room, cross forward. 
Across the 40, up to the 42, a gain of eight yards on the play. Kerry Martin brings him down. Yeah, and Nick Kerry Martin is a, one of these true freshmen in the secondary. So they've got Tyke Smith and Kerry Martin, true freshmen that are starting at safety. One of their normal safeties, Josh Norwood, number four, is having to move to corner. And the other corner is number 11, Nick Troy, Nick Troy Fortune, who's also a true freshman. So a lot of moving parts in the secondary today. Second down to two. Hurts under pressure, got it away. And the first down, Kennedy Brooks out of the backfield. Josh Chandler stands him up. Kerry Martin comes in to help finish. So far, West Virginia's done a really nice job of Gus doing what's called kind of these delayed blitzes by the linebackers and, and some of these ends. It's a very unique defense with a bandit position, a spear position, a nickel position. And they're trying to confuse Jalen Hurts and then also bring late pressure in his face. And that's happening in some free areas. First and 10 of the 45. And Hurts running it again. Slips and gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like somebody may have tripped him up. Dante Stills was in the vicinity. Finally tackled by Josh Norwood. Vic Koning, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, came with Neil Brown from Troy. And they were really built on defense. You know, in their four years, they won 10 or more games in each of the last three seasons. And they did that with really good quality top 25 defense. And that's what they're going to be trying to do here at West Virginia. Second down and 10. Play fake. Hurts over the middle. Open. C.D. Lamb. Josh Norwood with the tackle, but C.D. Lamb is having a spectacular season. There's no doubt about it. And it's just a simple route. Look as he stems outside, and then he comes right across the middle of the field. Easy catch. Oklahoma quickly to the line of scrimmage as they pull forward. Uh, close to another first down, Kennedy Brooks. But getting back to C.D. Lamb, he won the Walter Camp National Player of the Week after his career game against Texas. Ten catches, 171 yards, and three touchdowns. But it was what he did after the catch, and Brady showed the video during the pregame. There were times when you paused the film and you said, hey, he's going to score on this play, and you'd think, absolutely not. Three, four, five defenders around him. Second and one, Brooks breaks it back. Reese Donahue with the tackle, but now Oklahoma. Putting together a solid drive. It's a 10-yard gain. This offensive line leaning a bit right now. Now they're doing a nice job winning that line of scrimmage. And this is where I think OU needs to improve the most. They, they got into this kind of scoring area a few different times against Texas, and they were unable to come away with touchdowns. They've got to get better in this area. They don't have Grant Calcaterra. Remember, they're great tight end, kind of a flex tight end. I think that hurts you most in the scoring area. Brooks straight ahead. He'll crawl forward and get inside the 20. Calcaterra out with an undisclosed injury. He doesn't know when he's coming back. Josh Chandler with the tackle. And the reason that he's such a weapon to have a great tight end or slot receiver is that you can occupy the safeties. And what that does is it allows you to still run the football. Because when you don't have that, the ability to own the middle of the field, passing the football in the red zone, is those safeties can play super heavy, heavy run defense and becomes almost impossible to run the ball. Second down and eight. Hurts. Goes through his progressions. Under pressure now. Turns the corner, throws on the move, touchdown OU. Wide open in the back of the end zone, Jeremiah Hall, the redshirt sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. A 20-yard touchdown pass, and OU is on the board. I mean, he was wide open basically the entire time. Here's Jeremiah Hall. He's just going to come in the middle of the formation. Watch how open he is right when he breaks contain. Right here. If he gets ball, well, he's going to run for a touchdown right there. He keeps going, keeps going, finds the open spot, and he's still wide open at the end of the play. Third touchdown of the season for Jeremiah Hall. Burkich in to attempt the extra point, and Gabe Burkich is good. Jalen Hurts showing those legs as he gets out of the pocket and finds his man, Jeremiah Hall. Sooners take a 7 0 lead. If you're in the presence of royalty, this is seems like for the last three postseasons, they continually big home runs, big hits when they need them the most. I was watching Big Poppy. The big way is going to remain friends. He said he's happy with the success he's having. And the two, the two still keep in touch. And Simmons also pointed out to me that he really tries to bring that mentality from Alabama to the way he plays.
Here's Kendall throwing, and that one incomplete. Nice throw. Sam James, the intended receiver, but it was broken up by Trey Brown. And Alex Rich told us Trey Brown playing much better football this season. Yeah, they're more confident in the secondary, you know, and they've got really a rotation of three corners that play a lot for them. Parnell Motley, number 11, Trey Brown, who you just saw, number six. Freshman number four, Jaden Davis, who has worked himself into getting a lot of time here in this secondary. So these guys doing a heck of a job, and they certainly did a number on Texas's big wide receivers last week. Second and ten of the 25, Letty Brown in the backfield. For the Mountaineers, here's Austin Kendall to throw it up the sideline. He's got a receiver, and incomplete. James again, and once again, Trey Brown breaking it up back to back. Terrific defensive plays from the junior from Tulsa. I felt like last year they were so scared to get pass interference calls or defensive holding calls. And Alex Grinch has told them, you play physical and you force the issue onto the official. You play physical, you be aggressive. And I think that that has really lifted itself to some great play from the secondary and specifically these corners being aggressive. And Alex Grinch said he's going to live with a couple of PI calls and even some holding calls as long as they're making plays, which they're doing so far third down and 10 of the 25 Kendall looking near side guns it incomplete Ali Jennings the intended receiver but Parnell Motley I tell you these DBs for OU are improving Motley Turner yell Trey Brown Pat Fields you like what they're doing remember Alex Grinch earned his bones as a secondary coach he played as a safety in college and was a small college All-America. Yeah, and this aggressiveness is paying off, and he's done this before. He took Washington State, who was terrible as a pass defense, in the bottom two in college football, and got them to respectability. That's really when his uh, name started to rise in the coaching ranks. C.D. C. D. Lamb grabs it and goes down at the 30. Six yard line. Time for Michael. And that may be enough <laughs> with that defense. Oh, and he's absolutely right. What a good line. Four shutouts for Wisconsin this season. Here's Jalen Hurt standing strong in the pocket over the middle. Here's CD Lamb at midfield. And he loses an edge, goes down at the 42, tried to break it back, but will gain. 31 yards in front of Sean Mahone. I mean, this had the makings in particular from our seat up here in the press box of being an electric score, but watch him lose his footing on his inside cut. And it's important to note, it rained a ton here last night here in Norman, Oklahoma. A lot big thunderstorm rolled through. It's beautiful right now, but this field is a little bit slick. Hurts pulls it down, decides to run it, picks up a first down, sprinting, Hurts hurtling, and finally knocked out of play. Jalen Hurts gains 28 yards as Kerry Martin escorts him out of bounds. And again, this, this fast motion from the right is going to open up Hurts, and then he's going to make the read, and then he's got two pulling guard tackle, and then he's out the gate. Great play designed by Lincoln Riley, creating space for the run game, and then attacking it, not only with that pulling guard and tackle, but with that quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who is a terrific runner. First and 10 at the West Virginia 15 for OU. Playfield, Hurts, sidesteps, delivers, and it's a completion. This time, it's Charleston Rambo, the redshirt sophomore, who's having a sensational season. And sometimes it seems like they go away from Rambo just when he's getting warm. Well, I mean, there's there's so many, I mean, how do you put it? There's so many mouths to feed on this offense, right? I mean, tr listen, Trey Sermon is one of their best backs. He didn't get a carry last week, right? Jalen Hurts that. has eaten some of those up. You've got Kennedy Brooks. You've got C.D. Lamb. You've got Charleston Rambo. I mean, th there's so many weapons. We've seen Jeremiah Hall with a touchdown catch already. And sometimes you can just get lost in the shuffle a little bit. Trey Sermon in the backfield right now with Ramondre Stevenson. Play fake over the middle, touchdown, guess who? Rambo. Charleston Rambo with the touchdown. 19 touchdown passes on the season now for Jalen Hurts. And the Sooners have a chance to take a 14 to nothing lead. He does a great job of reading this safety, and Lincoln Riley heard you, partner. He said, you know what, you're right. The safety comes down, Hurts makes a great read, and he's like, I gotta get a score for my man, Charleston Rambo. That's an easy touchdown made possible by that terrific read by Jalen Hurts. Watch the safety, he pops down, boom, throw it right past his head. Charleston Rambo is third in the nation at 
23.9 yards per catch. Has six receptions on the season for 30 yards or more. Picks up a big touchdown here. Oklahoma moving, grooving, up 14 zip. Oklahoma goes on a four-play, 74-yard drive, scoring in a minute and 59 seconds to take a 14-0 lead over West Virginia. For all this talk about Hurts possibly becoming the third straight Sooner quarterback to win a Heisman, Hurts says he would gladly trade places with another former Sooner, Josh Heupel, who finished second in the Heisman, but won a national championship. This could be Oklahoma's year. 10 of 25, new coach in West Virginia as well. Kendall hands it off. Kennedy McCord, nothing doing. That Oklahoma defense right on the play. Guess who? Kenneth Murray. This guy is playing his best football. Kenneth Murray was just a second-team all-conference player. I think right now he's playing all-American level football, and I think he's in the running right now in the top three, four linebackers in the entire country. There's a few other buckish winners that have played here at the University of Oklahoma, and I think Kenneth Murray, if he continues to play like he is playing right now, is going to have a chance to etch his name on that buckus award. He is that disruptive right now at the linebacker position, one of the fastest players on the field. Second down and 11, Kendall delivers, and it's a completion. T.J. Simmons, the Alabama transfer, gets to the 31-yard line. Those other three buckus award winners, Brian Bosworth, Rocky Kalmus and Teddy Lehman. Well, Teddy does radio work here for the Sooners. I know he's in the building. We were told that the Boz was going to be in the building, and Mike Houck, the sports information director, told us that Rocky Kalmus was also going to be coming today here on homecoming. So potentially a future Buckus Award winner playing in front of the three Buckus Award winners from OU here today. And he's got a big chance here on a third down. OU wearing its alternative Rough Rider uniforms today. The same uniforms they won in the Big 12 championship game. A victory over Texas, and Simmons can't get around the corner. This Oklahoma defense, Aguebu with the tackle, the freshman. You're going to get a rotation from the safety, Gus, and that's going to bring the other safety right down into where West Virginia wants to run, and then that blows the play up. Terrific play there by number 34, Aguebu, who as a freshman is starting to earn some time on this defense. They love his speed, his athleticism. He's 6'4", 230 pounds. And you can see that physicality there on the last stop. Takes us to the end of the first quarter with the score. Oklahoma 14, West Virginia nothing. I think a late timeout, folks was called with one second remaining and that timeout called by Oklahoma so this will be the fourth punt by Groudon CD Lamb back at his own 26 and Groudon will punt this one into the wind from the 16 and he fakes it tosses it caught and a first down for West Virginia. The Mountaineers throwing caution to the win as they fake a punt. Dante Bonamico with the reception. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. West Virginia will take the punt. First and 10 at the 38. And Kendall underneath incomplete. Shut down and broke it up. Parnell Motley says no. Ollie Jennings, the intended receiver. Motley, a senior. Oh, got one more crack at this. And that position specifically, the corners, I mean, they were just lamented over last year by the fan base, everybody. They knew, listen, they were 130 out of 130 defending the pass. And everybody knew, even though they made the playoff and they made that run in the last three quarters against Alabama, that that defense was the Achilles heel of that team and really has been for the last couple of years. And, they are certainly playing better this year. Second and 10 at the 38. Kendall drops it off underneath. He has his receiver, Jennings, with room. And Jennings will pick up a first down. 
Delarian Turner yell with the tackle, but it's a 20 yard advance for West Virginia. Uh, I, ta I talked about that rotation of the safety. Now it hurts him. He has Radley Hiles, number 44. He goes way out of there. Then you've also got Delarian Turner yell, number 32. He went with his man too far outside and allowed that vacated area to happen for the bubble screen on the interior, and West Virginia made him pay. First and 10 of the 42 yard line for the Mountaineers. Best drive of the day so far. Kendall with the handoff straight ahead, and he is gobbled up by Ronnie Perkins. No room for Kennedy McCoy. And the front seven for Oklahoma, they're doing a nice job this season. They are, and what they do a lot of for Alex Grinch, and this is really his staple, is they get movement, Gus, across the face of the defensive line, and they'll bring one backer, and that's how they fit their gaps. They try to play aggressively, and there, Perkins is just right place, right time for a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. What a tackle it was. Second and 11 at the 43. That looks like a WWE tackle, partner. Should have been on last night. And they'll hand it off. McCoy running left this time. Slices through the defense. They'll pick up a yard, maybe two on the play as Ronnie Perkins was there once again. So Gallimore, Perkins, Ron Stokes, guys up front, especially Neville Gallimore. He's coming off a terrific game against Texas. Neville Gallimore was unblockable last week. One of the things that they told us, though, is that he will do that. He will shine all of a sudden one week and then disappear on others. And they charge Neville Gallimore with being a force on every single week, on every single down. This is when he was great last week. Passing situations, third and obvious, right in the middle of screen Neville Gallimore get home and a timeout called by West Virginia Austin Kendall returning to Norman Lenny Brown in the backfield they'll give it to Brown straight ahead Brown fighting for some extra yardage not a lot there as Pat Fields the safety and Neville Gallimore combine on the tackle you might be wondering why in the world would they just have a nondescript run play on a third and long well, that's because it's four down territory. So they're just trying to get into a more manageable fourth down situation. Offense going to stay on the field. Now, Neil Brown's offense has more of their playbook at their dispo disposal with only six to go. Well, fourth down and six. Kendall out of the shotgun. Kendall to throw it. Underneath, caught. First down, T.J. Simmons. T.J. Simmons, touchdown, West Virginia. What a touchdown. Evan Staley, extra point is good. Two games back against Texas. Right now, if you're West Virginia, though, you have to feel good. Hit points on the board. Ten plays, 75-yard drive. C.D. Lamb, two catches, 46 yards. I know one thing, I listened to Jenny's show. Undisputed this week and she knows how to frustrate Shannon and skip Bayless <laughs> She is all over first and ten of the 25 Hertz Underneath and it's caught nicely done Baskin turns it up And Nick Baskin gets up to the 40-yard line before being brought down by Darius Stills That's a great throw and catch there Baskin did a great job just settling in that zone giving the curl route giving the numbers back to the quarterback Hertz threw that ball right on time accurately allowed him the opportunity to run out to the catch first and ten of the 39 yard line Kennedy Brooks in the backfield with Jalen Hurts and Hurts pulls it out runs straight ahead Jalen Hurts picks up a first down Jalen Hurts with great size for running quarterback 6'2 220 check out this ball handling as Jalen Hurts they're gonna have this stretch zone and he rides it rides it rides it all the way until he finds that open hole and then he's gone Hurts drops it off underneath to Kennedy Brooks Kennedy, what a play Brooks down the sideline Kennedy Brooks gonna get there flag down the country coming out of high school Illegal last year in the back number 11 offense 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down watches Brooks Spins out of that tackle, really, two tackles, and then here's Hazelwood, and he's coming up, and he tries to throw his hands up like, no, no, I didn't block him, but he's... From Georgia, first and 10, at the 34. Mm -hmm. 
Hurts delivers over the middle. And a nice grab in heavy traffic as he goes right back to Hazelwood after the penalty. And how about that courage over the middle? He knew he was going to get popped. That ball was high from Jalen Hurts. And Hazelwood, who runs about 205, goes up the ladder, knows that he's got contact coming and hangs on to the ball. Ellenwood, Georgia, Cedar Grove High School, first and 10 of the 21. And the run at Brooks. Big opening. Kennedy Brooks leads forward. Sean Mahone with a tackle. Brooks, a Richard sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. This offensive line just gets better and better every time we see him. What, guys, what is this? The third time we've seen Oklahoma? Fourth time? Who knows? I feel like I need an apartment here in Norman. But I will tell you that this, this offensive line that had four new starters from a year ago, they're getting better every single week. The run game is cleaner. The looks are more defined for the running backs. They're doing a heck of a job up front. Now they'll bring in Trey Sermon and Ramondre Stevenson. This is Sermon, finally gets a carry and picks up a first down. Ruben Jones with the stop. But so many great running backs in the history of this program. Mm -hmm. Adrian Peterson, Joe Washington, Steve Owens, Greg Pruitt. How sweet was he? Billy Sims, Heisman Trophy, Billy Vessels, Marcus Dubree, DeMarco Murray, Quentin Griffin, Tommy McDonald, Clendon Thomas. Samaje P. Ryan, Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon, Rodney Anderson, mm, Mr. Anderson with the Cincinnati Bengals now. First and goal at the nine. <laughs> Kennedy Brooks tripped up, keeps his balance, touchdown OU. Reload number 17. He's gonna have a beat on Brooks. Has a chance right there, doesn't get him to the turf. What a great step out by Brooks. He's shown great agility and balance so far here today. He's able to stay on his feet and he winds up in the end zone. Remember, Kennedy Brooks had a career best 182 yards rushing at West Virginia last season. 21 7 OU. Ground and pound. OU football. Yeah, I got no excuses. Woo. I got no excuses. Yeah, I got no. Oklahoma has scored touchdowns on three straight possessions. They already have 247 yards. Hurts nine of nine. 136 yards passing, two touchdowns. Kennedy Brooks seven carries, 54 yards and a score. As the Sooners take a 21 to 7 lead here in Norman. Alex Sinkfeld, Sam James are back deep. And they'll return it. Sam James from his own goal line. And James will get to the 19 before being dragged down. First and 10 to the 19. Austin Kendall under pressure. Drops it off and incomplete. Intended for Mike O'Laughlin. You know, this, this field position, I'll tell you, last week against Texas, Oklahoma Gus did such a good job on their kickoff team, pinning, Oklahoma, uh, excuse me, pinning Texas inside their 20 yard line. Devin Duvernay for Texas kept running the kickoffs back out of his own end zone, and the kickoff team ran down, did a great job in coverage, and they've done it again here, pinning West Virginia inside their own 20 yard line. Remember, a fair catch or downing it gets you out to the 25. Second down and 10 to the 19. Brown and Letty Brown. Will tumble forward. Sean White, sophomore, making the stop. Now well, here's that situation. I told you on the last series, this is when Neville Gallimore, number 90, really shined last week. And he's not in this series. We've rotated out, so it's going to be Marquise Overton, number 97. He was also terrific last week. That's one of the weak spots for West Virginia is their center position. There's Overton right in the middle of that defensive line. Third and six at the 23. Austin Kendall all day to throw. Now scrambles, wants to let it fly, does. 
And it's an incomplete pass. Letty Brown, closest man to the football. Kenneth Murray bearing down on Austin Kendall. That is not a good feeling if you're Austin Kendall. First, you've got nowhere to go with the ball. It was great time provided by the offensive line, but the defensive backs did a great job of taking away the easy throws, and then late, now you've got Kenneth Murray bearing down on you and just bam, right in the stomach for Austin Kendall. Can't feel good by his former teammate. Fourth punt of the game for Groudon. Inside his own 10. C.D. Lamb, the deep man. CD from the 32 looking hits the corner turns it up and finally wrestled down at the 42 maybe the 43 yard line a 43 yard punt first and 10 at the 43 Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin here's Hertz delivers over the middle to a wide open receiver and it's Charleston Rambo a 30 yard gain when you get that much time it is easy to just use the entire offense he's got plenty of time in the pocket he goes through his progression he's hit six different receivers so far now 10 of 10 this is the best i've seen him look this season as a passer in the pocket in this offense so clearly continuing to develop under lincoln Riley. first down to throw it sliding looking delivers caught cd Inside the five, and it'll be dropped at the two. C.D. Lamb, 25-yard pickup. Sean Mahone with the saving tackle for the Mountaineers. But again, it's Hurts. He was buying time not to run, but to throw, keeping his eyes down the field, allowing the progression to work for him. C.D. Lamb pops open late. He's able to deliver the ball over the middle and create another scoring situation here inside the five, Gus. C.D. Lamb, three catches, 71 yards. First down and goal at the two. Sermon and Stevenson in the backfield. Hurts pulls it out, looks. Hurts stops, jukes. Touchdown, OU. Jalen Hurts again. Play 57 yard drive, Sooner scoring quickly. A minute and 24. This is what an athletic, experienced running quarterback can do for you. When the defense does everything right, everything right, he still makes them wrong. A missed tackle, finds the seam, cuts in for the touchdown. Jalen Hurts, what a sens sensational performance so far today. Extra point for Gabe Burkich. And it's good. 28-7, 6.31 to play in the second quarter. Jalen Hurts using his legs. Sooners finding the end zone again. If you want to keep up with me, I better head a tiger, better climb higher, heart better pump. It's okay. Oklahoma okay right now, 28-7. This kick fielded. Near the 20 yard line by Alex Sinkfield. I mean, Clemson is a really good football team. I think at times they're bored with this ACC schedule. That conference is not good this year. Kendall throwing over the middle, incomplete for Jennings and a flag. Jaden Davis was in coverage, number four. And here's the corner on that side. And puts hands. Oh, yep, there was a tug. You see that tug on the back of his jersey? And just ever so slightly and Jennings was unable to get free and that's when the flag came out pass interference number four defense spot foul automatic first down and good call there Jennings the true freshman so many freshmen on this team in fact you know, remember that shootout that these two teams got in a year ago Will Greer Kyler Murray you know put up that amazing shootout 59 56 in Morgantown Neil Brown, when we were talking last night, he says, you know, I look around this offense, there are only five players on this whole offense in the entire two deep that even took part in that game. So this is, in large part, just a completely new group from what was so successful for Dana Holgerson last year. Dana Holgerson now, the head coach at Houston. Ball start, number 76. Offense, five yards penalty, still first down. 
Neil Brown, 39 years old in his first year, fifth year as a head coach, 35th coach in West Virginia history. He's a really good coach, Gus. He's a really good coach. I think the future is bright for West Virginia, regardless of what happens today. A lot of young players right now, they're building their culture right now. They've invested in their facilities, which will take place in December. Simmons. And Neil Brown in his final three years at Troy, he won 31 games, including three bowl games. He also finished first in the Sun Belt twice. And in 2017, who could forget, Troy upset number 25 LSU 24 to 21 to end the Tigers' 49-game non-conference win streak in Baton Rouge. And they also played a Clemson team that would eventually win the national championship to a one-score game. Uh, there in Death Valley, beat Nebraska on the road. He was kind of a power, power five killer there when he was the head coach of Troy. On second down, they hit the receiver underneath, but Oklahoma prepared. Ali Jennings unable to turn it up. Buki with the tackle. Bradley Hiles. Bradley Hiles is a guy that was so highly recruited, and he's a bit undersized. He's only 5'9", 185 pounds, but he's got great instincts. I mean, terrific instincts. Understands the game of football so well, in particular in the middle of the field. And that's what pays off on these third down situations. We'll see where they go here, but remember, it was the last crucial down. It was the last fourth down. They went to T.J. Simmons. He's kind of been their go-to guy over the last few weeks. He's in the slot. Third down and nine to the 34. Austin Kendall, the thrower, steps up in the pocket, buys time, on the move, and incomplete. Threw this one out of bounds, Sam James, closest man to the football, Oklahoma getting pressure on that West Virginia offensive line. And that was the whole M.O. last week, nine sacks, 15 tackles for loss. They were constantly badgering Sam Ellinger, and there they're able to do it again here on third down for Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator. Fifth punt. For Groton, at the 19, C.D. Lamb hovering around the 25. Lamb backpedaling from the 10, reverses, stays on his feet, and finally taken down at the 6-yard line, a 56-yard punt. Texas game also had the flu, first and 10 at the 8. Stevenson. And Stevenson will be dropped for a loss. Tyke Smith, freshman from Philadelphia with the tackle. Yeah, nice job by that defensive front. Nowhere to go for the running game there for Oklahoma. And Tyke Smith, he's a guy that's been forced into to some action because Giovanni Stewart, a veteran for this team, decided to transfer leading into the Texas game. That was going to be their fifth game. Stewart wanted to retain his red shirt year which he had not used so far in his career which forced Tyke Smith into the lineup again another one of these young players second down and 14 here's Hertz and Hertz gets out of bounds as he crosses the 10 Josh Norwood chasing him and you know Vanderis Cowan lost for the season the Alabama transfer linebacker injured his knee against Iowa State Taj Alston is a guy that they've lost due to injury. Keith Washington is a corner that they've lost due to injury. Akeem Bailey, another starting corner. He's out for this first half. He'll be back in the third quarter. He was thrown out for a targeting call in the second half of last week's game against Iowa State. Third down and six at the 12. Empty backfield for Hurts. Over the middle and incomplete. Nice defense as Josh Norwood knocked that ball out of the hands of Drake Stoops. The redshirt freshman, the son of former head coach Bob Stoops. First incompletion for Hertz. Yeah, and this one really more on Stoops. It's in his hands. Got to corral that before he's going to take contact. You see his head looking upfield. Drake certainly would like that one back. That's a catch that he needs to make, and it was right near the chains for a potential conversion. So Munchau will punt out of his own end zone, two yards deep. Alex Sinkfield, the returner at midfield for West Virginia. Mountaineers with a chance to get good field position. This one, fair caught at the 49-yard line. West Virginia gets great field position. 
Kendall sprints out of the pocket. Throws across. Caught. Down at the 31. Great route. Bryce Wheaton. Delarian Turner yell with the tackle. And a great job by Kendall as well. The route, terrific job by Wheaton. Staying on track on his path there on that over route. But Kendall goes through his progression on the outside. That's a run action pass where he's going to break, contain, get outside of the pocket. Now you've got to read high, low. Some people read it low to high, but he gets one, two, and then that over route is the third man in the progression. He finds him, and that's a nice conversion. Kendall, 10 of 18, 114 yards passing. One touchdown. They're reversing, but Oklahoma prepared this time. It's Wright trying to wiggle out of trouble. Winston Wright finally stopped by Kenneth Murray. A two-yard pickup. Murray's speed is on a different level from anybody else on the field. Anytime he's in a closing position, he makes up that ground so fast. He's become one of the best linebackers in the country and really the face of this resurgent OU defense who now is being driven on here for the second time in this first half by West Virginia. Second down, eight at the 30-yard line. Kendall. Quarterback key, Deshaun White, stops him. Well, this is a good-looking series. Kendall clearly in a rhythm, whether he's running the ball or throwing the ball. Simmons back in the game now, number one. He's been a guy that has been a real go-to guy for them. And OU looks like they want to stay in this man coverage. Simmons... Certainly a lot of room right now at the line of scrimmage in the slot. Third down and four at the 26. Kendall looks the opposite side. Hits his man, Sam James, underneath for first down. As he slides down inside the Oklahoma 20. And that is the first completion for the Mountaineers on third down. They're now one of eight. Simmons with a great block on the outside. Watch Simmons. Boom. Right there. He blocks the corner. That Gets that little inside bubble screen wide open. Kendall floating it in the corner. Incomplete, but a flag on the play. Anything and everything right Passing now you can call on Trey Brown. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. And OU is last out of 130. Letty Brown lines up at running back. They'll give it to him, man. Letty Brown taken backwards. It's almost like Oklahoma knew the play. First man to him, Deshaun White. Neville Gallimore also plugging up the hole. Bradley Hiles came over late. I think that that confused the offensive line. They never got targeted, and they never got a hat out there to block the safety who had come down as kind of that outside linebacker. A loss of one, second down. Make it a loss of three, second down and goal at the seven. Empty backfield for Austin Kendall. Kendall in the corner. Call incomplete. Sam James, that one just goes right out of his hands. And it was a great route. Good timing by the quarterback. A good throw. Just got to bring that one in. A good call by Neil Brown as well. Kendall knows it. Everything right there was for the taking. James would have just had to reach that left hand out for the pylon to try to extend it for a touchdown. So that'll make it third down and goal at the 7. 29 seconds remaining in the first half. And a timeout call. At the 7. West Virginia with one timeout left. Austin Kendall, looking, reverses, looking, delivers, touchdown on Nears. Point is good. No doubt, there's absolutely no doubt. This is a, a program that I think has a really bright future ahead of them, and you never know. Oklahoma will take a knee and going into the end zone with a 28 to 14 lead. OU 308 yards in total offense. Hurts almost perfect, 11 of 12. 191 yards passing, two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Kendall to Simmons for West Virginia, two scores. 28-14, our score at halftime. Now we'll send you to Rob Stone.
for the big noon halftime show in Los Angeles. Down, utilized his offense. As you take a look at the Geico first half stats, those rushing yards for OU 116. Their defense has done well against the run, but those corners have struggled a little bit here, and particularly late in the second quarter. So Oklahoma will get the football to start the second half. Trey Brown is the deep man and allows this one to go into the end zone for a touchback. Let's big loss for their defense. He's a big leader. All right, first down and 10 of the 25, and it's Kennedy Brooks. He'll pick up seven yards, crossing the 30-yard line. Hakeem Bailey knocks him out of bounds. Kennedy has done a great job the last couple of weeks, and he continues to do so today. He's carried the ball seven times, 54 yards. And you look at what Jalen Hurts has been able to do in today's ball game. Started 11 for 11 before that first incompletion. And it really was a drop. The record here at OU, 16 of 16 to start a game by Baker. Second down and three. Brooks again finding his way for the first down. Tyke Smith with the tackle well and Jenny just shared Josh Chandler he was playing Mike linebacker he was number 35 and so now their depth continues to get affected x low seven at 17 is gonna have to be in there Quantel reigns number eight is gonna have to get some time as well hurts over the middle caught first down again for Oklahoma this time it's Lee Morris Lee Morris kind of a forgotten man in this Oklahoma passing attack after having so much success with his former high school teammate, Kyler Murray. How about some tempo here from OU? You can tell Lincoln Riley not happy, wanting to establish rhythm early. Jalen Hurts rolling, delivers. Charleston Rambo, did he get a foot inbound? Yes, he did. Wow, what body control. From Charleston Rambo, from our position, didn't look like he had any room to complete this ball whatsoever. Gives Rambo a chance. Hard to tell by that angle, but yeah. Well, let's see. Did he control? Absolutely. That's an excellent job. Left foot, left hand. Boy, what a play. 26-yard gain for Charleston Rambo. Brooks again, breaking it back. And it looks like Brooks has emerged as the feature back for this Oklahoma team. And you can see why. He's got that patience, Gus. We talk a lot about patience. You know, we're going to see Jonathan Taylor next week for Wisconsin. He's got that patience. You always call it that Le'Veon Bell type of floating behind the line of scrimmage. And you can see that a little bit from Brooks. He, Brooks, he allows the blocking to take place and then attacks the open area. Hurts, first down and more. Gets to the 10, 5, touchdown OU. 22-yard run, his second rushing touchdown of the game. Jalen Hurts. We've twice now seen Jalen Hurts make West Virginia pay when they've done everything right defensively. Watch the secondary. They're doing a great job. There's nowhere to throw the ball. The rush kind of gets to him. He's flushed out, and yet his legs and athleticism make OU right. When they really shouldn't be, that's why he's been the best player on the field today. What a dangerous weapon for the Sooners. Gabe Burkich in for the extra point, and it is good. Dominating performance for Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma offense, 35 to 14. So much energy and enthusiasm. You can tell, Joe, when the pressure is off of a coach, he can kind of relax a little bit. And, you know, that's a team that is not playing well early and clearly developing as the season goes on. Letty Brown.
right now about whether Jennings right before the catch may have extended and pushed off. The offense. Legal man downfield, number 74. That penalty will be declined. Pass interference, number 19. Offense. That penalty will be accepted. 15 yards from the previous spot. Still second down. That was James Gemitter, number 74, the left guard who was downfield. Remember the barrier is three yards. There's the left guard. We'll see. See and they up yeah, there. See right, right there. He's blocking the linebacker. He's clearly more than three yards downfield when Kendall lets go of that ball. And then the fighting taking place. We saw, and I saw, partner, what you saw. At the end, it was clearly Motley draped all over him. But before that, to create the initial space, the officials felt like Jennings had extended that arm in a push-off mode against Motley before that ball arrived. What a huge sequence there. Second down and 20. Kendall steps into his throw down the field with a receiver. Incomplete. Sam James had a step. Kendall couldn't put it on him. He ran past Trey Brown. And there's a flag on the far side of the field now. And it's pretty clear. Very clear that West Virginia's plan in this second half is going to be attack these corners. I still think that this is the weakest part of OU's defense is the corners, even with the improved play. They're First attacking them here. Warning issued West Virginia head coach. You know what I don't understand? What is that? Why do you have to have the, the whole pomp and circumstance of a flag and an official announcement there for a sideline run? It's like issue a sideline warning and then just like quickly make the announcement. But why do you have to have the flag and stop the clock? And... No, it's just me. Is that just me? You, you feel that way too? I just think Scott Campbell, the referee, needs to be seen. <laughs> He's spent a lot of time in the weight room. He's one of San Jose's finest, bravest firemen. And the run, Kenneth Murray plugs up the hole. As he beats his chest after making that kind of play. Well, I mean, they were just swarming him here. And on third and forever, there's nothing you can do. They're trying to run kind of a little bit of a draw right there. And Murray is just too fast. He closes it down. That whole series, though, was about the call on the pass interference as well as the mistake from Gamitter of being downfield. What looked like was going to be a first down inside the 30-yard line, maybe even inside the 20 for West Virginia, is now turning into a punt. So the Sooners forcing West Virginia to punt for the sixth time. OU averaging, or OU giving up 20 points per game this season, and they almost fake it. Again, and this one just shanked out of play. No. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 45. <laughs> C.D. Lamb getting involved and on the reverse he gets close to the first down looks like he has it smith again with the tackle for the mountaineers Let's see how this offensive line can continue to win the line of scrimmage they've done a great job so far running the football for over 160 yards so far jalen hurts with time lost one in the air over the shoulder lee morris touchdown sooners and he's been waiting lee morris Beautiful route, great ball by Jalen Hurts. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Well, the offensive line provided a huge amount of time. And watch the left guard, Marquise Hayes. He's going to spin back right here. And now he's going to go back and get the free rusher. That provides just enough time for Hurts to get the ball all the way down the field. And that ball was an absolute dime. Perfectly thrown over the shoulder to Morris for the touchdown. Lee Morris came into this game with just three catches for 62 yards. But he said, hey, I'm not worried. There will be games I have zero targets, and there will be games I have eight targets. We have so many weapons. You got to think about the bigger picture for the team. Big picture there, 84 with the score. Touchdown, OU. Oklahoma on big. First down, West Virginia. So this is going to be first down at the one. 
All right, so they give him the fair catch signal right there, okay? Even if he's looking up at the sun right there, it looks like he might have even been trying to block the sun. But they put his hands above his shoulder, doesn't matter. They give him the fair catch. If you drop the fair catch after the fair catch, he's telling him right now, and it's in the field of play, then the well, ball is dead at right that there. point. Foot. First down, West Virginia at the one, or excuse me, two-yard line. We right saw now. that last week. That's right. Devin Duvernay for Texas had the same exact thing happen to him. And it's important to note that kick is into the wind. What happens when it's into the wind? It just shorts you by a yard or two, in particular when he was having the sun kind of right in his eyes. So West Virginia will start from their own two-yard line. Letty Brown will give him a little room as he gets to the five, Nick Benito. They, they actually have, in, in the rules and, and within the officials, they have a distinction between shielding the sun and the fair catch. If you extend your arm, that's a fair catch. If you're going to shield your eyes, it's got to be right over your head and very obvious. And that one was very close. So they got together and said, what did you think? And they're always going to err on the side of safety, which would be giving him the fair catch symbol if that hand raises above that shoulder. Second down, seven at the five. Letty Brown again. And Brian Asamoah, the redshirt freshman from Columbus, Ohio, with the tackle. He's getting some playing time. Ran into Brian Asamoah before the game. Young man wanted to, number 24, play for Urban Meyer at Ohio State. Came all the way down to Norman. Third down and three at the nine. Well, this game could get away from West Virginia in a hurry. Kind of like it's already gone here, but if they have to punt this ball away. Oh, boy. And that one, Bobble. Kendall picks it up, throws it. Sam James, close to a first down. It looks like they were blowing this play. Right to the snap. Dead. Oklahoma calls its first time out of the half. Yard line for West Virginia. Kendall hands it off to Letty Brown, and he won't get it. Nick Benito again for the Sooners. Yeah, Benito, and also watch Fields come up number 10 from the safety position. This is what Coach Meyer was talking about in the pregame, the eye discipline and then the attacking nature and the run fill of the safeties. That's so important. If you're going to play two high safeties, what I would call open middle of the field defense, those safeties have got to be heavy run defenders, and they certainly are here for Oklahoma. Seventh punt of the game. C.D. Lamb, the deep man. Groudon, deep in his own end zone. And they block it! Loose! Oklahoma has it! Touchdown, Sooners! Coming straight up the middle of the field. Runs right by that protective wall. Listen, that guy's got to take somebody. You take somebody so that the punter can get that away. You can't sit in the middle of two players and allow someone to go block that kick. And how about that? Looks like, what, Stockner jumps on it in the end zone? How about that? The true freshman tight end, Austin Stockner, is able to get on the ball. For Looks like touchdown for OU. And it looked like Braden Willis blocked it, number 81. Gus Neil Brown last night talks glowingly about the special teams for Oklahoma and how much they've improved. They're going to see and make sure if he's gained control and was in bounds. Control. Certainly looks like it there. Jay Bulware is the special teams coach. There's a good shot there. Tough to see the exact moment that you would declare control, and they will confirm it, and we'll have an extra point here. What a sequence there for OU, defensively and with the special teams. 
So it was blocked by Braden Willis and recovered in the end zone by Austin Stogner. Extra point is good. 49 to 14. 651 to play third quarter. Oklahoma clicking on all three sides of the football. Offense, defense, and now special teams. After one, and they were able to do it. The H-back, Braden Willis, with a huge ball. Berkic kicks it away. Returnable this time from the six-yard line is Sinkfield. He'll go out of bounds as he crosses the 26. And that great defense for Ohio State. That's going to be great, man. Our Big noon kickoff will be on site. Live Urban back in the shoe. We're going to be in the tunnel where Ohio State comes out right in front of the students. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Now things unraveling here for West Virginia, and this is now the third straight second half that we've seen this. They played Texas incredibly well in the first half two weeks ago. Last week they were in a 14 14 tie against Iowa State, lost it down the stretch. Here they were playing really hard, inspired football in the first half, but it's gotten away from them here in the third quarter. Austin Kendall handing it off to Kennedy McCoy. Gaining a yard on the play. You know, it's it's pretty clear right now that the way to attack this OU defense is you got to get outside of that front seven because they're doing a great job stopping the run. Only 23 rushing yards right now for West Virginia. That's 1.3 per carry. But where you can get them is in the seams when you can get them in man-to-man -man coverage with great players like T.J. Simmons, and then when you throw down the field against those corners, that's where you've got to attack the Sooners. Second down and 14. Kendall bounces it outside and just goes hit as he throws. Marcus Strickland decked him and a flag on the play. Well, they were trying to run that inside little bullet screen again that they've had some success with today. And Sam James, number 13, looked like he was going to be the intended target. And it looks like Jaden Davis got a piece of him, like tripped him up, maybe tackled him there. But there was a lot of contact down there with Sam James on the ground. Prior to the pass, holding number four, defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's still second down. There's the Davis, number four. He's going to try to get his this action as he's trying to go back. See how he just kind of grabs that left leg and tackles him. That was the intended target right there, and that back official threw the flag right away. So, again, the aggressive corners with another flag here. And... I think that that's kind of a theme right now. If you can create time for your quarterback against the front seven, which West Virginia hasn't given up a sack today, then what you can do is attack the corners here for the Sooners. Second down and four at the 34. Eddie Brown straight ahead. And Kenneth Murray in on the play once again. We had a chance to... I had a chance to... Stand next to Kenneth Murray in the elevator a couple of weeks ago when we were here at Oklahoma. And I tell you what, man, I felt like I was standing next to a superhero. <laughs> An Adonis, if you will. Man. I think it's, it's, he's obviously impressive physically, but I think it's the speed with which he plays with at that size. He's 6'2", all at 235, 240, really. And he plays so fast, and he's been so much faster in this defense for Alex Grinch as West Virginia's going to call a timeout here before this third and two. But this new simplified scheme, Gus, has allowed a guy like Kenneth Murray, Murray to use his speed to his advantage and play like a lightning bolt. This Mountaineers today. Third down and two at the 36. West Virginia looking for the first down, and Letty Brown will lean forward. Looks like he has it. Letty Brown, sophomore from Philadelphia. Nice job there by Letty Brown. They think very highly of him if they can keep him healthy. Last week he got his ankle dinged up and he had to get it rewrapped and kind of slowed him down. And I know he hasn't gotten loose today, only 13 rushes for 18 yards, but he does have a bright future. Um, it's a guy that. On the season, has a touchdown, run for over 150 yards so far. Oh, 
Snap infraction, number 68. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. It's Bryson Mays, the center. We had to retool this offensive line from a year ago after yeah, just a little false first snap there for Bryson. Some pros leave this offensive line, including Yadni Kajust. Terrific player for them. Kendall out wide to Simmons. Incomplete. Turner yell in coverage. Just was the offensive lineman of the year in the Big 12. Just to give you an idea of the level of player they were trying to replace. Remember, they're having to replace second team All Big 12, Will Greer, the quarterback. First team All Big 12 wide receiver, David Sills, and a terrific leader. leader. Gary Jennings was honorable mention. The tight end, Trevon Wesco, was first team All Big 12. Kajus was the offensive lineman of the year in the Big 12. They didn't just lose guys, right? Like, they lost leaders, they lost all the oxygen out of the room, and they're trying to piece it together here in the first year for Neil Brown. Second down and 15, they drop it off the ground. And he can't hold on. I guess Dana Holgerson, who left here at West Virginia to go to Houston, knew that uh, the cupboard would be bare and it was time to move on. I think you're right, partner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Let's see if Oklahoma can present any pressure in Kendall's face because they really haven't been able to do that so far. Third down and 15. Kendall pulls it out, trying to get outside, tripped up, and will be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage of Weibu with the tackle. Well, it's been a much more inspired half of football here in this third quarter, and he just sits right there. Guaybo does a great job. Look how he keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. If you turn your shoulders, what you're doing is creating a seam for the defense, and that allows the quarterback or the runner to have some sort of a lane make you wrong as a defender, but he keeps his shoulder square, squeezes down, and then ultimately gets the tackle. Oklahoma block, blocked the last punt by West Virginia. This one clear. And the Sooners will get it. At the 38. Well, it's always tough, and Oklahoma State, by the way, watch out for them. I, I like them today against Baylor. They've got one of the best backs in the country. So Stoops with the reception. That was that same route that he dropped earlier. And, uh, hey, by the way, that drop from Stoops earlier, still the only incompletion on the day for Jalen Hurts. 15 of 16 for 282. Second down and one at the 48. Stevenson breaks it inside and picks up the first down. This offense is the best offense in the country. There's just no, you know, they are statistically, any analytics will show you that they're the best offense in the country. Then you watch them on tape. They're the best offense in the country. There are some people that put up kind of these false numbers. There are no false numbers with Oklahoma. Today, they're averaging 11 and a half yards per play. That's preposterous. Stevenson spins forward, crosses the line. Dante Stills. Gus, you know what's interesting for Lincoln Riley's perspective? As good as Baker and Kyler were, I'm not suggesting Jalen is better. I am suggesting that at times they can be more difficult to defend because of Jalen's acumen as a runner and in the quarterback designed run. That can put more players in conflict on the defense and put more pressure on the defense. And we've already seen a couple of times today, West Virginia do everything right. Jalen Hurts still made him wrong and ran for a touchdown. Second and nine at the 47. Here's the reverse. Hazelwood. With a convoy in front of him as he gets out of bounds. Close to the first down. Eight-yard gain. Dante 
Bonamico knocks him out of play. And again, he's got some blockers in front. Hazelwood, one of these true freshmen, he was the number one wide receiver in the country coming out of high school. There's a great block. Hurts throwing it down. <laughs> it's kind of dug to the ground. How about that? You got to love that from Jalen Hurts. Third and one at the 39. Hurts in the air. Hurts caught out of bounds at the five. Theo Weiss. A 34-yard completion, and he's just finding everybody today. Yeah, exactly. Here's another one of these true freshmen. Theo Weiss from Allen, Texas, runs a great route, gets a lot of space. Hurst puts it in the perfect spot on the outside shoulder. Weiss is able to adjust, make the catch. Weiss, Trajan Bridges, and Jaden Hazelwood, three five-star true freshman wide receiver that we haven't even heard a lot from so far this season. And I get a... a Sneaky suspicion, Gus, that during the second half of the year, one of these guys is going to break out and be a major factor. First and goal of the five. Second man through is Sermon. things that's different and I alluded to it just a, a moment ago about the, the quarterback designed run this is when it actually pops up and becomes a real factor for you Jalen Hurts is 15 of 16 on rush attempts with three yards or less to go and right now they're in that situation that's 94 percent whether it's a conversion for a first down or getting in in the goal line second and goal of the three Sermon breaking tackles and it'll be taken down it looks like inside the run yeah, that's probably going to do it for the third quarter and they'll just wait and the next snap will be the first snap in the fourth quarter Dante Stills in on the play for the Mountaineers end of the third quarter 49 to 14 Oklahoma knocking on the door once again Start the fourth quarter, Oklahoma third down and goal at the one. Sermon, the pistol back. Excuse me, Sermon in the eye. The deep back, bobbled snap, hurts. Trying to hold on and will be tackled. Behind the line of scrimmage, Josh Norwood coming hard. That's interesting. I was just about to talk about the fact that they're showing this under the center kind of new wrinkle. They did it last week against Texas, and they've been kind of sending it out there. And this is Ian McIver, who is the backup center, who is in there. And I got to tell you, it's so difficult for a center quarterback exchange if it's not what you're used to doing and you're in a short yardage situation. That center, he wants to get out of there so quickly that it's hard to get the snap. Herkic from 29 yards out, and it's good. He is six for six. And downs of 40 or more yards since Lincoln Riley became the offensive coordinator in 2015. That's 22 more than the next closest Power 5 team, which is Alabama. That's insanity. He's the best offensive coach in football, any level. Ooh, not a doubt in my mind. Any level, not a doubt in my mind. I don't know about that part. I burst down at 10, West Virginia at 25. Letty Brown, a cut. nice cut. Gains eight, Delarian Turner yell. This is when Lincoln Riley would love to see an internal standard from his defense. It's 52 to 14. Everyone's been telling this defense how great they are. They've made some mistakes today, but this is when he wants this, this group to have that internal sense of pride, an internal standard, which suggests that they can go out there and dominate in a quarter in which the game has gotten out of hand at 52-14. Can you go out there and still play your best football? Second down and three of the 32. Eddie Brown again running it, looking for the first down. He's close. It will depend on the spot. 
Who's the best team in college football right now? Uh, that's a great question. First, I want to let me present a caveat. I think that there are more really good, great teams in college football right now than there were at this point last season. It's a very deep field. I would go towards Ohio State because of the balance that they provide, in particular with the dominant defense. LSU could make a case with their resume. Alabama could make a case with their sensational quarterback play. Wisconsin on defense has been absolutely tremendous. I noticed that you didn't mention the defending national champion. Well, you know, Clemson. Th they're, they're right there. I will mention them as well. I've got them right up there. You know, I think I have them seventh right now. The thing with Clemson is they have struggled in areas that we thought they would be really good. So they've played what I would deem as below expectations to this point, and then they've got a one-point win against North Carolina. Let me just put it this way. If Ohio State would have come out, played below expectations this season, and had a one-point win against Indiana, everyone would be, and rightfully so, criticizing them. Austin Kendall throwing it, drops it off to his running back, Letty Smith, and a flag on the play. In Ohio Holding State in Columbus. Six. Another receiver defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's Trey Brown again, number six. And again, these, these corners are so handsy. And they are grabbing so much that that was not even really at the point of attack. But during the route, Trey Brown held the wide receiver, kind of grabs his jersey. The thing that they're going to have to get used to is that you can play aggressive with your hands, but when you grab and pull the jersey and affect the route, that's going to get called every time, and I'm sure Alex Grinch is not happy with the way his secondary has played so far today. First down at the 47. Kendall pulls it out, throws the deep ball. Over the shoulder, and it is caught. Isaiah Isdale with the over-to-the-shoulder catch. 36 yards. How about this? What a great pass, first of all. Definitely gets away with a little push-off to create the space, but that ball was thrown perfectly from Austin Kendall. It was good coverage down the field by Turner Yell, but certainly Esdale Got away with a little push at the last moment. First down to the 17 for the Mountaineers. Now Kendall the other side and incomplete. Esdale again, the intended receiver. Kendall 14 of 28, 182 yards passing and two passing touchdowns. Been able to keep him clean for the most part. OU doesn't have a sack after having nine sacks a week ago. I think that's been part of the problem for the secondary is they've had to just cover too long. And this front seven needs to put pressure on Kendall a lot quicker to help out their corners. Second down and 10 of the 17. Kendall lobs it up. Nobody there. Route was cut short for Ali Jennings. Jim Murray and Kendall have been jawing at each other the whole day, which you got to at least believe is, is friendly yet intense banter from two former teammates. Every time they're close, you can tell they're jawing at each other. Remember Austin Kendall, the graduate transfer from right here at OU as a backup to Kyler Murray a year ago for the Sooners. Third and 10 at the 17. Kendall, flag on the play. Breaks the tackle and finally, Oklahoma gets to him, but I believe this defense five yard penalty still third down. You know, there's they're starting to suffer some injury. Here's Benito at the top of your screen clearly offside as he jumps. He was starting today because John Michael Terry the junior out of Tulsa was injured banged up and unable to play today. And so some depth issues now wearing their head. There's Terry number 40 right there with Benito. Third and five at the 12. And he'll hand it off. Lenny Brown and Neville Gallimore grabs him quickly. Great job by Neville Gallimore playing some of his best football of the season. From Ontario, Canada. 
has the ability to dominate. Certainly did last week. Haven't been able to call his name quite as much today. He'll come out of the game now as Marquise Overton. Gallimore on a fourth down. Just the second Canadian to ever play for the Sooners. Joshua St. John in 2014 and 2015. Fourth and four. Here comes the blitz. They drop it off incomplete. Letty Brown is open. Kendall rushed on the play. And West Virginia turns it over on downs. 10.27 to go, fourth quarter. 52-14, OU with the ball right after this. Gus that we thought was going to kind of rotate, and Brooks has stepped out a little bit and become more of a featured guy. Tanner Mordecai, incomplete. So let's think about what you said the other day. I mean, uh, earlier today, Lincoln Riley, best coach, offensive coach at any level. I mean, Sean Payton, New Orleans, Josh McDaniels with the New England Patriots, McVay went to Super Bowl last year, Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. Him, he's doing great with San Francisco. He's better than all those men at the pro level. Sure. Okay. Here's a run. Trey Sermon. I'm just giving you a hot dog. No, I'm just a, having fun. With I it. think it's a really good discussion. I, I really do. I think many feel that Lincoln Riley is a is an NFL coach waiting to happen. And you know what? I know that I speak for a lot of Sooner fans and, and a lot of us in college football that would say we hope that he stays in college football. And, and candidly, he's got more to prove here. You know, there. Oklahoma running it. And it's Stevenson. Go ahead, Parker. Well, I was just going to say, and he'll be the first to say something like this. He's like, well, we're all in three in the playoff. You know, and. They want, he wants, his mentor is Bob Stoops. I know everyone kind of attaches him to Mike Leach, but his guy is Bob Stoops. And Bob is a guy that stayed here for a long time. This is a very unique place. You know, you can do everything you, you want, need in the, in the sport as the head coach for Oklahoma. And, and I have a feeling that, that Lincoln, who really cut his teeth in college, remember, he's not an NFL guy that's down here. He's a kid from just outside Lubbock who cut his teeth on college football, and I think he wants to stay and finish his business here with the Sooners. Turned 36 last month, a fumble. Yesterday, and why he wanted to be a part of this program, but it is about a culture change, and that is what senior Colt McKivitz said to me. They're already seeing the progress. They're seeing the change. He said, this is the closest I have been with my teammates, and back to Coach Brown, a couple reasons he wanted this. He wanted this this team because of the location. Four and a half hours from Kentucky, where he grew up recruiting. He played and coached at UMass, so he knows that Northeast area, and then the tradition of this program. 14th winningest program in history. He is excited to be here and excited to help with the change all right thank you very much Jenny Taft second and 15 at the 32 for the Mountaineers Sinkfield you see Trey Lowe now remember he got that one snap early in the game I think it was the second series he came in and got that snap at quarterback for this offense and he played for his dad he's a coach's kid uh, Woodrow, his father at uh, Bolivar Central High, he finished as the career all-time passing leader in high school with 5,500 yards and 53 passing touchdowns. Rushed for another 25 in his career. Very athletic player. Semi-finalist for Mr. Football in the state of Tennessee. One third and 15. Mountaineers running it. Deshaun White with the tackle and that'll bring on the punt unit you can turn it around though i mean you yeah. look at what's happening at baylor in the big 12. Yeah. how coach rule has come in and after a successful career at temple now down in waco doing big things and they'll eventually you know play better defense i'm sure of it that's part of his mo he's obviously on the offensive side Handles the play calling duties. Drake Stoops, the deep man for Oklahoma. And it's fair called at the 22. It's for out of the game now. He went 16 of 17, 316 yards passing. Three pass 
passing touchdowns. He rushed for 75 yards on 10 carries and two rushing touchdowns. Drake Stoops with the reception there. And Hurts is our fourth unstoppable player of the day. He was sensational, and he was so efficient. 16 of 17, like you said, Gus, and he was hitting several different receivers. He was running the football when he needed to. When West Virginia did everything right, he made them pay. He threw some absolutely beautiful passes. That touchdown to Lee Morris was a sensational pass over the shoulder. I thought today was his best game as a Sooner so far. I thought he played great against Texas Tech. Last week, candidly, it wasn't his best game. You know, they didn't. They didn't play well in the red zone. He turned the ball over. He had the flu. He had the hand injury. He was stiff. They just never quite played to their potential. And today he came out there, and I, he was on a mission from the first snap. And he played just great football. I like this pocket presence. It's getting today. better, better yes. and better, you know. And that development under Lincoln Riley in this system, you could, I think, see it clearly today. And a fumble on the snap. See, I learned all those things from you. Pocket presence, catch radius with C.D. Lamb. You know, are you a 21 or 22 mile per hour runner when you're in the open field? Yeah, but all of that is boring. You know what I learned from you? What? <laughs> That's what I learned from you. That's a young man there, C.D. Lamb. That's never boring. Third down and 11 at the 33. See if Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown plays this next game for the Ravens. He had an ankle injury. That ball deflected and incomplete. A.D. Miller, Richard Sr. from Dallas. Bishop Dunn High School couldn't hold on. These are the type of possessions, even with the backup guys in there, that drive coaches mad. They're perfectionists. And and you're right. You're absolutely right. We spoke to Alex Grinch yesterday. As a matter of fact, after the game last week against Texas at Red River, Lincoln Riley was jogging into the tunnel, and then he turned around and went back to Alex Grinch. He wanted to congratulate Coach Grinch, his first-year defensive coordinator, for doing such a good job with the defense. We spoke to Coach Grinch yesterday at the Switzer facility, and you would have thought that they lost the game. <laughs> Was so disappointed. He was disappointed oh, in everything. Eight yard line. For the Mountaineers, Trey Lowe in for Austin Kendall at quarterback. And he runs it. And that picks up a first down. Nice run there from Trey Lowe. And now you're going to see a lot of the backups in on this OU defense trying to get some more reps in for them. Not a lot of depth in the secondary, so you'll see a few of the starters still in, in the secondary, like Jaden Davis, number four, started this game today as his first start in an OU uniform, the freshman corner. You know, Alex Grinch, you were mentioning, Gus, before we went to break, he was not happy with some elements of last week's game which I thought was was interesting after everybody consensus being that they played so well and they really did up front their front seven was dominant against Sam Ellinger they flew around they tackled well but they were helped out and, and Alex Grinch brought up a, a few specific examples he, he thought that a couple of those long runs from Rashawn Johnson the freshman running back for Texas he thought that those he was so upset because they were something that they repped and repped over and over and over again and he th he felt like those were simple run fits that his defense should have executed and so he was focusing on those the few plays that allowed texas to really get back into that game that really kind of kept him up at night at times last week handed off straight ahead seat field well, nine sacks last week against Texas. No sacks today, but a solid defensive performance, giving up only 14 points. Yeah, it's going to be a better performance today on the scoreboard, but I thought it was a better performance, what I would fail execution last week against Texas because you had way too many penalties today defensively. I thought Kenneth Murray was outstanding. He had close to 10 tackles on the day, a couple tackles for loss. He was in on the quarterback a couple of times. Uh, but they're going to look at that that secondary and they're going to say listen We still have an issue covering at the corner position at times in particular when we don't put pressure in the face of the quarterback Lowe's prints out and delivers So a completion George Campbell With the catch short of the first down 
And this is still going to be the question for them. I mean, their offense is obviously as potent as any in the country. Really good front seven. I think the question's in the secondary for them and what they're going to be able to do, you know, when they have to run up against a passing game that is incredibly potent, whether that's in the playoff or even in the Big 12 championship rematch. Maybe that's against Texas, and they have to see Sam Ellinger again. Stoops with a fair catch near the knee injury. Clay Johnston. And Clay is their middle linebacker. He's a heck of a player. And they've got to face the nation's leading rusher in Chuba Hubbard. I think that's an incredibly tough matchup for Baylor today, and it would not shock me at all if Oklahoma State were to actually pull off a victory up there. And in fact, out there in the desert seem to agree with me. What's the spread of? The last I saw was two and a half. I don't know where it moved. Interesting. Second and 12 at the 28. Reverse. Pledger gets up field. Shea Campbell with the tackle. How do you like Michigan Penn State tonight? You know, I, I there was part of me that thought, listen, when every single thing suggests that it's going to go one way, it's probably going to go the opposite way. But I, I just can't. Penn State's playing too well on defense. Michigan has struggled on offense. They don't play well on the road, in particular in ranked matchups. The whiteout environment is second to none. How about that? Nice throw, nice down. catch. Michael Jones. I think Penn State wins that game. Penn State winning at Iowa last week. Michigan winning at Illinois. Michigan put in that new offense with Josh Gaddis coming from Alabama, former Penn State assistant under James Franklin, and they're spreading it out. And Coach Meyer said that sometimes it takes you five or six games for that kind of offense to click. No doubt. We'll see if that happens with the Wolverines today. Hostile environment right out in Happy Valley. Uh, that one's, that one's going to be a terrific one, there's no doubt. But, Gus, there's one thing I do know. Was that? Oh, you is really they are good. Very, very they are good. Really good. And, and I understand. There's probably some OU fans that are unhappy with me today because I've been nitpicking a little bit on their defense, some on their secondary, some things that they can improve on. You know why? Because you aren't in it for just Big 12 championships anymore around here. You know, you've got four of those in a row, looking for your fifth uh, in a row. And here's the run, all the way down inside the 10 for Pledger. This is about a national championship. Are you good enough, Oklahoma, to win in the playoff? Can you beat Alabama? Can you beat Clemson? Can you possibly beat Ohio State? It'll be a different level. But right now, Lincoln Riley has to be pleased with the way his team is playing. All facets of the game. Offense, defense, they blocked the punt, returned it in the end zone for a touchdown. His quarterback doing a nice job. Jalen Hurts, 16 of 17, 316 yards passing, three touchdowns. He rushed it 10 times for 75 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Oklahoma with 547 yards of total offense. Solid performance from Austin Kendall, 14 of 30, 182, two touchdowns passing. And Simmons with four catches for 74 yards. He caught both of the touchdowns from Kendall. Oklahoma improves to 7-0. and Boy, man, if Hurts continues to develop like this... Three-man race. There's no ceiling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he he's certainly in that. Joe Burrow, Jonathan Taylor, Tua... Jalen Hurts, maybe Justin Fields. Like national championship contenders, I think that there's a really deep roster of Heisman contenders. And that's why, folks, the second half of the college football season is going to be unbelievable. Looking so many great to. teams, right? No doubt about it. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, Lincoln, we followed you over to say something to Austin there. Just want to ask you how that moment was. Oh, it was good. You know, it's fun to see him playing, getting an opportunity. Uh, I've always thought the world of him, so fun to, fun to see him throw some good balls, even though it was against us today. <laughs> Appreciate that. Now, in terms of today's performance, you said something to us yesterday. You'd learn more about your team today than you would against Texas last weekend. What did you learn? 
Uh, I really love how we rose, you know, especially early in the game and then and then coming out of half when we given them a little bit of momentum there. I thought we rose up. We had some really good streaks together, had the huge special teams play down here that energized us, and we did some really good things on all three sides. Speaking of that block punt, it might be the most excited I have seen you on a sideline. Like, and how good are you feeling in terms of the progress and taking this thing every day and making improvements every week? Yeah, we get better, and then we, we continue to expose things that we got to get, you know, we got to keep improving. And that, that's part of it. I mean, that's, that's if you want to win championships, that's how these things go. And you got to stay hungry uh, to, to continue to improve, and we're going to do that. Okay. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Thanks. Good job. The Sooners continue to lead the nation in scoring offense, total offense, touchdowns from scrimmage, completion percentage, yards per pass attempt, and TD to touchdown to interception, rather, ratio. Big game, 52-14, the final for Joel Klatt and Jenny Tab. Gus Johnson saying so long from Norman.